I'm Grace Neutral, a tattoo artist and activist. I don't know if they're more freaked out by my tattoos or the fact that I'm wearing a Burberry coat in a spa. I'm interested in ideas of alternative beauty and pushing our boundaries of positive body image. And you could never wear makeup again. How oh. would you feel? I will die. To me, the human body is a beautiful thing in all its forms. What Gracie could have looked like if she didn't fuck her face off. I've travelled to South Korea, where, amazingly, tattooing is illegal. I'm going to explore their $6 billion domestic beauty industry and K-pop's influence on Korean beauty ideals. So we're here in Myeongdong in Seoul, which is basically like the epicenter of beauty. This is where everyone comes to get their beauty products. As you can see, it's heaving, it's crazy, the streets are so full. Every other shop seems to be a makeup shop. Korea has one of the world's fastest growing and technically advanced beauty industries. South Korean women spend more than twice as much of their income on makeup and beauty products than American women, while men spend more on beauty products than anyone else in the world. Skincare and beauty product advertising is everywhere, with K-pop stars and K-soaps pushing the latest cosmetic trends. There's an unparalleled emphasis in Korean society on looking good and having perfect skin. Young South Koreans and increasingly China's beauty tourists flock to this area, lured by skincare and makeup products dubbed K-beauty. You come here just for fashion or do you come here to buy makeup, skin products? Or everything. Yeah, or facial, <laughs> makeup, or... <laughs> Is make How long every day do you spend doing makeup? Two hours. Two hours a day? Koreans have one of the most extensive skincare regimes in the world, piling on between 10 and 18 products a day. It's pretty mental right now. I've never seen crowds like this just come for beauty. Korean products' promise of perfect skin is fast becoming the most exported and desired around the world. Just from chatting to people, it's not just South Koreans that come here for beauty. I just met a couple of Chinese girls. They said to me that it's one of the best places to come and the best products are here. So I'm coming here to meet up with a girl called Ulyana. Basically, she is a girl that kind of epitomizes everything to do with mainstream beauty in South Korea today. And hopefully she can give me a bit of an insight on her life and the things that she does and the routines that she has within beauty. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good, thank you. And look at your eyes. <laughs> yeah, my eyes are purple, but your eyes, they're very beautiful too. Yeah, so yeah. where did you have done it? Um, I had it done at home where I live in London. In London? Yeah. Is it common in your country? No, it's no. not common anywhere really. Oh. I think maybe less than 100 people have it in the world. Oh, yeah. So not very many. So, Uliana, where are you taking me now? We are going to Moonshot. Moonshot? Yes. Okay, what's Moonshot? Moonshot is makeup store. Uh huh. And we are going to have a makeup over. Oh, cool. We're going to have a makeover. Yeah. The influence of K pop on young people in South Korea cannot be overestimated. And major K pop label YG Entertainment are taking advantage of that. They developed their own line of cosmetics to sell in their store in central Seoul, Moonshot. Beauty products were a natural item for Korean stars to promote. On K-dramas, surgery is often part of the plot. Well, Yana? Yes? What kind of look are you going to go for today? Heavy makeup? Yeah? Yeah. So like a typical K-pop? Yes. Yeah? Nice. With your parents, how did they feel when you started wearing makeup? I was in a 그리고 대학생 딱 들어가서 엄마 아빠가 메이크업 그 제품들을 사 주셨어요. 이쁘게 하고 다니라고. 그리고 굉장히 메이크업 하면서 이뻐진 내 모습 보고 엄마 아빠도 계속 이쁘게 하고 다녀라. Wow. I usually wouldn't wear this much like heavy dark eye makeup because I think my eyes are pretty intense anyway. But no, it looks really good. 
the K-pop star look is it's not bad. Ulyana offered to take me to Seoul's 24-hour, seven-story mega spa to show me that beauty isn't just about makeup, but a big part of Korean lifestyle for young people like her. So I've come to a spa in central Seoul with Ulyana. We're going to go and check out the pool and the jacuzzi. But if I'm honest, I'm feeling pretty nervous right now. Um, one of the ladies who guided us in here to the changing rooms asked me if I could change in a private room because of fear of everyone being offended from my tattoos. She asked me to keep my coat on. And yeah, already getting a bit of a weird reception. This is so weird. I don't know if they're more freaked out by my tattoos or the fact that I'm wearing a Burberry coat in a spa. Ooh, this is nice. I found out that more than 60% of young women in their 20s have had cosmetic surgery here. I wanted to find out how Ulyana felt about the issue. Do you think that girls in South Korea are getting plastic surgery too young? For me personally, um, a lot of the procedures that girls over here get when they're very young is pretty extreme, um, purely because of the age that they are. Done nose top. Mm -hmm. My nose shape was was not straight, so I make it straight. Okay. Anything else? I got botox every six months. I suck on my fat from my leg. Mm -hmm. uh, put it on my face. Where in your face did they inject? Everywhere. Everywhere. Forehead, cheek, and. Um, what differences did you feel were the biggest in your appearance changing? I have no fats on my face, so I look prettier. With these girls and guys who are young, do you think it's the pressures of society telling them that they should look a certain way? She's been really open with me about everything she's been through. But this whole kind of sense that K-pop has such a huge influence on the way young girls look, I think it's great to idolize people who you admire. But for me, for 18-year-old girls to start getting Botox just because they feel like they have to fit into this K-pop ideal almost, kind of made me feel a bit uncomfortable. that's really weird <laughs> is that there's just a big room of people yes. and they just they're asleep on the floor like randomly yes but then there's just like their parents are asleep and then the kids yes. are like playing around and stuff and they sleep here all night yes all oh, no. and i used to sleep here every weekend with my fr friends Regime. How would you feel if someone took that away from you and told you that you could never have cosmetic surgery again and you could never wear makeup again? How would you feel? I will die. <laughs> really? Yeah? Yes. yes. I want to become prettier. This is a pretty bizarre place, if I'm honest. I've never been to a spa before that's open 24 hours. I've never been to a spa that has like an arcade in it. I'm used to going to spas or being in a swimming pool and maybe people looking at me funny because I'm heavily tattooed, but never quite to this extreme. You can tell that just not impressed by me at all. Um, I, and I definitely think it's got to be the tattoos and the stigma around tattooing. A few years ago, I wouldn't even been let in a place like this. Like I would be completely banned from coming into a, into a spa. 
It's clear that Ulyana reflects South Korea's mainstream beauty culture. While I'm uneasy that this billion dollar business puts huge pressure on young girls to look perfect, it's easy to see why so many are influenced, especially when K-pop idols themselves are having to conform to the very narrow beauty ideals. I know young women in the West are facing a lot of the same pressures. Although in South Korea, it's socially acceptable for teenagers to have cosmetic surgery, it is illegal to be a tattoo artist. I'm fascinated to understand how younger generations are challenging traditional views of beauty. The government estimate there are more than 20,000 tattooists working in illegal tattoo studios. I'm on my way to meet South Korean artist At Pro Lee at his illegal tattoo studio. I've followed his career now for a few years and he's been telling me all about his underground shop and how secretive he has to be through it. I've never been somewhere before where the art form that I practice on a daily basis is actually illegal. So it's going to be really interesting to find out more about the whole scene here. Tell me about your studio. How long have you had this place? Just about two years now. As you know, uh, we don't really have tattoo culture or tattoo history. Ten years ago, I couldn't buy any tattoo stuff. I didn't know how to buy, where to buy. In Korea, it's illegal to tattoo without doctor license. But who's going to be a tattooer when they have a doctor license? Yeah, I totally agree. That's ridiculous, right? The government over here is dismissing this whole creative part of the process and that's kind of insulting my artwork, my trade, by saying that you can't do it but a doctor can. What generally is the attitude towards you from the public? The people who have a tattoo on the public, the people who have a tattoo on the public, the people who have so I don't really use any public transport. Yeah, I use only taxi or my car. You have a really beautiful collection of tattoos on your body, but one of my favorites is the noose, noose yeah. around your neck. Tattooist is not a job in South Korea, and I'm doing illegal, mm -hmm. so I'm a criminal here. Right? So, this is the meaning. I love it so much, Apro. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my little magpie from Apro. Oh, I want a little tattoo pie right now. Feels so good. Leaving Apro Studio, I couldn't imagine being forced underground or censored for my beauty choices. It feels like mainstream culture makes young people feel uncomfortable if the beauty ideals they express don't fit in with the traditional standards of beauty. Akros had this amazing idea that we're going to go to this little photo shop. People get their photos taken for passports, job applications. But the one thing that they do here is they actually edit your face. So we're going to go into one now and see if they can make the both of us look like normal, upstanding citizens. I just had my photo taken, just like you would when you're at school, you know, for the yearbook picture. And he's photoshopping it and making me look normal. Taking away all my tattoos, all my scars, uh, going to change my eyes back to normal. Whilst we were there, an older customer arrived who had some strong opinions to share about my look. Like... Yeah, I love it. It's so weird. It's really hard for me to look at my face. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's, I... it's so bizarre. 
what Gracie could have looked like if she didn't fuck her face up. Being confronted with South Korea's feminine beauty ideals gave me some insight into the pressure young people here are under to conform. I asked APRO if there was anywhere that young people like him felt comfortable being themselves. He suggested a club called Mystic, so we made our way across the city. This is the other side of Seoul. It felt amazing to see people with radically different looks to the usual K-pop style. People were enjoying themselves in their own skin. You're covered in tattoos, right? Uh huh. Yeah. What did your parents think when you got tattooed? They hate me. They oh, hate you. You're my son. You're not my son. You're not my son. Why you do that? Why you do that like that? Yeah. That's why I'm so sad. They sad too. So. So okay. your mother was she really upset? Yeah, and they're crying. She's crying. Yeah, she's crying. Oh, yeah. bless her. And One what, hour. An hour <laughs> of crying. Oh, oh like that. no. <laughs> and what about your dad? Dad. He never spoke to me five years. Yeah. Your dad hasn't spoken to you yeah, in five yeah, yeah, years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just he, because of tattoos? Tattoo and my hair, my beard. He don't like me, yeah, that's why. Mystic was full of young people with their own ideas of style and beauty, and it opened my eyes to the underground tattoo scene in Seoul. These people embody youth rebellion, and tattooing is a big symbol of that. They represent a subculture, the new generation flying the flag for alternative beauty by forming a scene and a community where they can be themselves, despite Korean society's rejection of alternative beauty. I met a girl called Solji. I was immediately transfixed by her. She's covered in tattoos. I wanted to find out more. This is Solji, and I just met her Hi. downstairs in the club. And she has the most incredible collection of tattoos that I've seen. Your tattoos are beautiful. What do your parents think about all these tattoos? Oh, uh, actually, they don't know about my tattoos. How do you hide all of this? I always like trying to cover my tattoos and always wearing my long sleeves and pants to cover my tattoos. Are like, they scared that you might not be able to get a job or something like that? Because that was my mum's fear when I was young. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Jobs and friends and, you know, like everything. I have my plans to tell them, but I, I'm not sure like when it's gonna be. I was shocked that Solji had been able to keep all of her tattoos a secret from her parents, but I wasn't surprised she felt she had to do this considering the attitude towards body art in South Korea. The next morning, I got a call from Solji. She decided she wanted to tell her parents about her tattoos and wanted me to come home with her for moral support. OK, me and Solji are going to go and meet her parents and do the big reveal. We're heading to Chongju and, uh, yeah, I'm pretty nervous, I'm not going to lie. I, think, I feel like I'm 14 again and I'm revealing my first tattoo to my mum. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, I'm excited. It's very, you know, many people think tattoo is a bad thing still, but Do you like, know why that is? Oh, maybe because they think it, start, it, it started from the gang member, mm -hmm. um, like the origin of, or origin of tattoos was a gang like sort of thing. Like okay. bad thing, so. so if they saw you in the summertime wearing a short top, do you think a lot of the older generation would judge you for that? Like when I was in the subway in last, I think maybe it's a last year in summertime, and very old lady just suddenly yelled at me and just saying sad, very bad words about me. Yeah. How did that make you feel? It hurts <laughs> because, yeah, it hurts, but it's very sad for me to say this, but I'm getting used to it. So. Yeah. 
Are you nervous about meeting your parents? Oh, I'm a little nervous. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little bit nervous as well, you know. <laughs> Being with Sulji took me back to when I first told my parents about my tattoos. I had no idea how they were going to react. But who are you all worried about? Your mum or your dad? Oh, my, my dad, actually. I'm really, really nervous. I don't know the fact that I'm here as well is going to make it worse. So yeah, I do, I do feel a little bit stressed right now. I'm just also worried. I don't want to make it any worse for Solji. As nervous as I am, though, um, I am really glad that we're doing this because I think it's really important to break down these stigmas and boundaries and open up the minds of people as much as we can and. Sulji wants to pursue a career in tattooing, you know, and she wants to obtain a, a good relationship with her family. So if we can kind of break down this stigma around tattooing by starting here today, I think that's great, because that's why I'm here, basically. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Fine. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 이야기를 언젠가 좀 해야 되지 않을까 싶어서 그냥 뭐 어떻게 보면 좋은 기회가 될수 있어서 그냥 이렇게 말씀드리려고 그리고 사진을 찍은 게 있는데 사진을 먼저 보여드릴까요? 그래 이게, 이게 네 등에 있다고? 네. 본인이 좋아하고 앞으로 이런 쪽으로 어떤 관심을 갖고 한다는 데에서 부모 입장에서 반대나 이런 건안 해. 안 했는데 이제 우리 그 사회적인 여건이나 환경이나 아직 분위기가 조성이 안돼 있기 때문에. <웃음> 아빠가 말한 것처럼 그런 좀안 좋은 편견이나 시선들을 마, 만약에 뭔가 더 성공한 위치에 있고 하면은 좀 그래도 편견이 사, 많이 사라질 수가 있잖아. 그래서 그런 단계를 단계 단계 다 밟아가야 되고 여러 가지 수모도 겪을 거고 여러 가지 환경도 처해질 거고 또 숱한 얘기를 다 들을 건데 그때는 어떻게 다 이겨내겠냐 이런 얘기. 응, 딸이 남한테 그런 소리 듣는 것도 싫고 많이 하는데 잠잘 때나 뭐네 생각을 할 때는 가슴이 많이 아파. 아니 그리고 지금 또 제일 속상한 게 뭐냐면 너 때문이 아니라 TV 뉴스에 그 사람이 만약에 뭐 체포가 됐는데 뭐 몸에 어딘가에 문신이 타투가 있다 하면 그거를 크로즈업해서 내보내거든. 그거 때문에 나쁜 일을 하는 게 아닌데. 그러니까 내가 그거를 변화를 시킬 수가 있잖아요. 뭐 그럴 그럴 수 있으면 더 좋은 거고 좋아하는 거니까 이해하려고 성공하기를 빌어. 그래서 다들 나쁜 시선으로 보지 않게 되기를 바래. 고마워. 
ask the, ask any questions what any kind of normal loving caring parents would ask and yeah they they really are like pioneers for the older generation in South Korea of being open-minded towards the new generation yeah I'm really proud of Solji as well I feel really good about it I just need a minute just to kind of think about everything I found Solji's journey very emotional, but it was a great experience to be part of. It was obvious that Solji's parents just want what's best for her. It really felt like by them choosing to accept her body art, it's brought them all closer together. I took it as a positive sign that prejudice against non-mainstream body image can and is changing. As I headed back to Seoul, I thought about something I've been hearing since I arrived and again heard from Solji's parents. People still associate tattoos with gangsters. I had to find out more. I've been in touch with a tattoo artist called Hernan who said he can introduce me to a gang member at his studio. I'm a little nervous as I don't know what to expect. So this is your friend, Mr. Kim. Yes. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. So there seems to be this stigma around tattooing and having tattoos in South Korea, uh, being attached to gang members and criminals. Can you explain that to me? Is that true? 한국에서는 뭐 이렇게 나아시나 이제 뭐 살이 많이 보이는 그런 옷들을 입고 문신을 보여주면서 위협적으로 걸어다니지는 돌아다니지 않아요. 위협적으로 막 문신을 보여주면서. 나는 뭐 갱이다. 그러니까 너 나한테 조심해라. 이런 식으로 돌아다니지 않아요. I'm going to ask you a really blunt question. Are you in a gang? 갱이네. Yes. Yes. Yeah? yes. <웃음> what do you do that is that makes you a gangster? 일적인 거는 그 일적인 거는 합법적인 걸 하죠. 그 상대편에서 반칙을 하지 않는 이상은 합법적으로 다 좋게 끝납니다. 근데 반칙을 한다면 합법적으로 해결 안 되죠. 네, 해결을 안 하죠. So the rules that you've established within the gang, that's the law that you abide by, rather than the government's laws. 이건 정당성이 있어야 돼요. 그러니까 남다 대기에도 왜 내가 이 사람을 때렸는지, 왜이 사람을 죽였는지 그거를 남다 대도 얘기할 수 있는 명분이 있어야 돼요. 그냥 아무 이유 없이 그 사람을 폭행을 한다든가. 살인 저지르니까 이거는 일어날 수 없어요. 그거는 그냥 강도, 그냥 살인자, 또라이, 사기꾼 이거밖에 안 되죠. So does everyone in your gang have a tattoo? 100명이 있다 그러면 100명 중에 한명 정도는 문신이 안 한, 문신을 안한 친구들이 있어요. The rest of South Korea might think tattoos and gangs are related is true because only one person out of your whole gang doesn't have tattoos. Meeting Mr. Kim helped me understand that if there's still an association between tattoos and gang members, gangsters are not the ones flaunting it. Over the last few years, attitudes towards tattoos have been shifting, particularly amongst the younger generation. A massive 90% of young South Koreans identify as K-pop fans. Maybe the popularity of music stars and celebrities publicly parading their tattoos has something to do with the shift. Jay Park is one of K-pop's biggest stars, with over 1.2 million followers on Twitter and Instagram. He's a massive pop sensation in South Korea and well known for having extensive tattoos. I'm on my way to meet him near his studio in Gangnam, Seoul. From what I hear, you're like the Justin Bieber of South Korea. <laughs> so one thing I have noticed in South Korea is the fact that the cosmetics industry is huge and plastic surgery is commonplace. Mm -hmm. Even just younger people, like people who are in high school and almost as young as middle school, they get cosmetics surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I've heard. I've heard the young girls get uh, nose jobs or double eyelid surgery yeah. as a present from their parents when they graduate yeah, and things yeah, like yeah. that. Botox or you get fat injections in your eyelids or whatever, whatever, and that's just very, very common. Did you find that 
getting tattoos and being in the public eye in South Korea, did that have an impact on your fan base at all? Or? Oh uh, yeah, it really did. Yeah. Um, well, first off, my, my family really dislikes it. Uh, my, my, my parents really dislike it. And also, my own fans would bash me because, you know, way before, tattoos were always associated with the mafia or whatever. I mean, you can't see it on TV yet because they blurred out. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. So if you if they did a performance of you on the TV yeah. and you were wearing, like, a vest, yeah. they'd blur out yeah. your arms. But they wouldn't even let me, you know, I'd have to wear, like, gloves and, like, a long sleeve. Although there is still some way to go for full acceptance, stars like Jay Park have a big influence on changing the attitudes towards tattooing in South Korea. This is giving younger generations the confidence to explore alternative ideas of beauty. It's my final day in Seoul, and I have headed to a small tattoo studio run by a female tattoo artist called Ida. She's expecting a young lady who wants to get her first tattoo. I love being able to be part of someone's first experience with tattooing, so I'm pretty elated right now. Her mum and dad are outside and her sister's here, so it's going to be a nice family day. Well done, babe. I think I've been with you for a few years, but I've been with you for a few years. I've been with you for a few years. I've been with you for a few years. So he has just had her first tattoo done, which is very exciting. But the even more exciting thing about it is, is her dad is actually going to get a tattoo as well. And from talking to the guys at the front, this is the sort of thing that would make the local news. So this is a pretty big deal right now. Because of the fact that he works in quite a corporate job, and back in the day, you could you could lose your job for having a tattoo, you know? Um, I just really respect him and love the fact that he's still young and a rebel at heart. And, doesn't really give a shit about what South Korean society would think of him with a tattoo. And he said, uh, after this one, if he is happy for get a tattoo, next month he may come <laughs> again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Starting a tattoo revolution for the older generation. Yep. Yeah. He's brave. Very brave. <laughs> It was quite amazing to see the dad finally get his first tattoo 30 years after he initially wanted one. It showed how much things are changing in South Korea. For my final evening in the city, I wanted to meet up with tattoo artist APRO again and share my thoughts on the experiences I've had here. Before I came to, to Seoul, the research that I did, all I really got from online and reading and looking on the news is that there's a booming plastic surgery industry here and it's all about plastic surgery and cosmetics. And it was really refreshing coming here and actually seeing how many young people in Seoul are actually open-minded and these younger generations are kind of breaking down barriers for the older generation as well. And what I find really beautiful is the fact that a lot of the older generation seem to be embracing the younger generation's culture change and I find that really inspiring and fascinating. This is uh, like, it's all about culture and uh, it's really natural, like raining. So no one can stop the raining. So we have to keep fighting and then we will survive. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope that 
you continue to push forward with with your art and your passion and keep fighting because I know you will and you're really brave and I really admire you so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Come sing with us. <laughs> I've travelled to South Korea where amazingly tattooing is illegal. I'm going to explore their six billion dollar domestic beauty industry and K-pop's influence on Korean beauty ideals. So we're here in Myeongdong in Seoul, which is basically like the epicenter of beauty.